Mm. Hi hunters, welcome back to my channel. Today, bit of an announcement to make. A couple of weeks ago, I was put in contact with a man called Prashis, who has made an amazing documentary uh, called BAM, Builders of the Ancient Mysteries. Now I have seen this documentary myself. I think Ben from Uncharted X posted about it like last year and I watched it and I thought it was great. However, what I, did, what I didn't think was great was that the uh, they're, they're French filmmakers and obviously the original film is in French and there is an English translation, um, which wasn't very good. The actual translation wasn't very good and also the lady who was narrating it in English wasn't a native English speaker. So there was just certain things that um, weren't pronounced correctly or just the translation just didn't make sense, guys. It just didn't make sense. So when I got put in contact uh, with Patrice, I mentioned that I loved his movie. I was a fan, I wanted to help and I offered my services as a voice actor and was like, hey, if you would like, if you ever wanna um, just record another version of this, I would love to narrate your movie because I think it's brilliant. And he was like, yeah, great, come to Paris, come to the studio, let's work on it. So I went to Paris for, li we literally had like two days to record the whole movie and it's quite long, it's like over two hours. Um, so we worked on the script, on the translation and we recorded it all. And now I'm narrating the movie, so I'm so honored. It's now available. You can go and I think you can you can get it from a number of places. I'm not sure if it's on Amazon yet, but if you, I'm gonna put the link in the description. You can go and you can rent the movie and depending on how much you want to participate, um, you can rent it for like 48 hours for like $3, not much, but the movies are uh, made, they, they were crowdfunded to be made. It's, it's, they're really important movies. Patrice and his team traveled all over the world getting amazing footage from places like um, Easter Island, Egypt, Peru, India. Um, these are the guys that went to the Barbar Bar Caves and scanned it and they're gonna go back to the Barbar Bar Caves this year, uh, which I may or may not be joining that expedition. It's just a really, really great movie and it's um, it's really beautifully made, but it's also really concise. There's a lot of information, a lot of technical sciencey information. So I think it's a really good place to start if you wanna show friends or family or people who just don't really know anything about ancient technology or um, alternative ancient history. This movie is just the best um, for laying it all out there. Uh, and it's fun to watch and I'm in it. So <laughs> what kind of? What I'm gonna do, Patrice has given me permission to show you a sneaky little snippet. So um, I'm gonna pick some of my favorite parts um, so you can get a little taster of what it's like on here. And if you wanna watch more, then obviously you can go and download the movie and keep it for yourself. So this part, I wanted to show you guys a little bit about the backstory of Easter Island because there are some things in Easter Island in its sort of traditional history that don't really make sense. I'm not gonna get too much into it here because I explain it a lot better in the actual movie. So enjoy. Let us start with one of the most well-known ancient sites on earth, a minuscule island lost in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, Rapa Nui, Easter Island. Le petit voyage, c'était Rapa Iti. Le grand voyage, c'était Rapa Nui. Easter Island is a speck of earth in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, located 3,700 kilometers away from the coast of Chile and about 4,000 kilometers away from French Polynesia. In a period of 100 years, the people from Rapa Nui are believed to have sculpted about 1,000 volcanic stone giants, the Moai, made from stone quarried from a crater. Ces statues qui sont fichées au pied du volcan, quand elles sont terminées, on se donne le mal de les mettre debout. Some of them were erected on pedestals, the Ao, set at various places on the island. Here are the main ones. Tongariki, the largest Moai formation. Tapitakura, the navel of the world, with the largest Moai transported from the quarry. In the Bay of Anakena, where the Moai are capped with their red pukau. Tai, where they have restored the white eyes of the Moai. Vinapu, the most ancient Ao of the island, according to archaeological studies. And Akivi, 
the only formation where the Moai look to the sea, and more specifically to the equinox sun. Let's quickly review the history of the island before getting to the important questions. The extraordinary saga of the Rapa Nui people starts there, in the Anakena Bay, where King Hotumatua, who left Polynesia with his bravest men, first landed. It is believed that they had built a prosperous society, and the most accepted hypothesis is that the Rapa Nui collapsed following clan wars throughout the centuries, while deforestation occurred because of the statues. However, in the latest archaeological discoveries, reality might have been quite different. Epidemics introduced by the Spanish navigators at the end of the 18th century, slave raids at the end of the 19th century, almost exterminated the population. We have to remember that the population here was reduced to 110 or 11 people at one point. The loss of the guardians of the Rapa Nui culture, who became forced laborers in the Peruvian mines, and the Christian evangelization campaigns almost exterminated the culture of these people. The Rapa Nui may have originated from Hiva Oa, about 3,600 kilometers to the northwest. You don't embark on this kind of trip lightly. You must think about food and especially water, because a 30 to 50 day trip by boat implies a certain level of logistics. There must be enough supplies for the trip back in case of failure. When we talk about the history of the du premier grand roi, du premier grand seigneur peut-être seulement, connu est Hotumatua, et nous savons que deux pirogues sont arrivées. Nous ne savons pas combien de pirogues sont parties. It's hard to comprehend what such an expedition could entail. You can eat fish, but enough water needs to be provided for such a long trip. You need to know ahead of time how many days at sea there are before reaching land. Either Hotamatua first sent scouts in various directions, and by chance, one of them discovered Easter Island, or they left randomly, and out of sheer luck, they discovered this speck of land in the Pacific Ocean. Alternatively, they might have known the position of the island beforehand, which raises the question as to how could they have known about it. Linguists cite the resemblance of the Rapa Nui language with the original Polynesian language. The former would have in fact evolved during migrations, this confirms the oral history of the Rapa Nui. They claim to have accomplished this trip straight from Hiva Oa Island. If it's true that they all migrated from this place, Hiva, the linguistic evidence suggests that Rapa Nui left that group of people first and came here. Of course, they were all speaking the same language at that time. It's difficult to reconstruct the true story of the Rapa Nui people, as it's been terribly damaged by multiple invasions. Recent archaeological studies go against the accepted idea of a nation of warriors. According to the American anthropologist Carl Lipo, the obsidian blades, long considered weapons, may have actually been tools for sculpting and gardening, noting their lack of a pointed tip. There are also no traces of fortresses on the island. And then there are movies that show very little respect for the people of Rapa Nui. After filming on the island, an American production company just threw a concrete moai that was no longer useful out into the ocean. But let's get technical. The giant moai of the Rano Raraku, which measures 22 meters high and weighs about 250 tons, is often shown. But we seldom see the moai which was sculpted in the crater wall. This complicated their future extraction. You could think they were not sculpted to be extracted. However, since they are not visible at ground level, why go to that much trouble? These moai weigh between 40 and 60 tons and are located about 15 kilometers away from the quarry. Some of the moai were capped with a bukao, hats made of red volcanic tuff extracted here at the site of Punapao, 12 kilometers from the quarry over steep terrain. The pakaya were transported, hoisted up, and set on top of the moai's heads, sometimes at a height of eight meters. How? Very simple, according to this information panel. Maybe someone has a better explanation, but no one has yet thought it would be useful or important to specify it here. In fact, no one really knows. We may have a vague hypothesis regarding the transportation, and we believe the moai might have been erected to protect the houses they were gazing at. 
although the statues tend to look more to the skies than to the ground. Experiments have been set up on flat surfaces to simulate the transportation of a five-ton moai. However, it's impossible to confirm that the same process would have been possible with an 80-ton moai like this one. Ahuvinapu is different from other sites because of its massive architecture, and it leads to some unsettling questions. Being the most ancient and still in place, it demonstrates that this way of building was the most resilient, therefore the safest. It was the best advertisement for this technique. True to the idea of linear progress by Homo sapiens, you would expect the subsequent sites to be built in a similar fashion, or even better. And the problem is that actually all the Ahu built after this one were never as large nor as precise in their assemblage, and all ended up collapsing, but not Ahu Vinapu. So the questions are, amongst the builders at Rapa Nui who followed, none of them noticed that the only viable technique was the one utilized at Ahu Vinapu. And if they did, why not reproduce this technique? Therefore, either the secret of this structure is a unique case lost in history, or the people of Rapa Nui had nothing to do with its construction. There's strong similarities in the style between Ahuvinapu and the structures attributed to the Incas in Peru. Genetic analysis of the island chickens show there was contact between both places, but we don't know in which direction. Dun, dun, dun. So that was that. If you enjoyed that and you want to watch more, then again, link will be below. Have a little nosy and uh, let me know your thoughts. And um, there's also not just, this is a, this is a BAM, Builders of the Ancient Mystery. There is also a second, uh, kind of like a part two documentary called Back to BAM, which is also brilliant. And um, they are trying to make a third movie. They want to go back to the Barbar Bar Caves and they want to do some serious, potentially history changing tests there. And they're going to document everything. And um, they just want people to know, um, get all the process down, the process down. That's not even a sentence. Why was I translating English? A little bit in the housekeeping. This year's Egypt trip and Peru trip are now fully sold out. I do believe that there is waiting lists because you know, people get ill, stuff happens, people drop out. So you can uh, put pop your name down on the waiting list if you'd like to join us potentially in Egypt or Peru this year. However, there were so many people waiting to be on the waiting list for Egypt that we decided to just do another trip because it was we just want everybody to come and experience Egypt. So um, me and Annie XT, we have booked a, another Egypt trip um, for the following March. So we're going this September and then we're also gonna pop back in March and we're gonna do um, another two weeks. So if you wanna go to, um, I'll, again, I'll put uh, Annie XT's website, um, his tour website below, you can go and you can pop your name down, do a little deposit or join the waiting list. No, not the waiting list, just put your name on a deposit and then you can join us in Egypt in March 2023. Oh, and if you didn't know, I I have some merch. If you uh, if you follow me here and you want to be part of the team and all the adventures and everything over here at Funny Old World, I have some merch, which is basically started out as a bit of an in joke. Um, I come from comedy, I used to do comedy sketches for like five years online, and I thought it'd be funny if I was going to do merch rather than just having like my name. I thought it'd be funny to do something else with it. So you can join my band, my fake band called the Copper Chisels and you can get band merch like band tees, totes, mugs. And if you do buy a t-shirt, then um, take a photo, tag me in it on Twitter or Instagram and I will retweet or I will post you because you will become a band member of the Copper Chisels. And I thought it was quite funny, um, Copper Chisels, because obviously if you know you know, like you get the joke. If you know about ancient history and ancient technology, then you know what copper chisels, you know, you know why that's funny. And if you don't, well then, it's just a cool t-shirt. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to help support the channel in um, a way that is absolutely free, then please just press the like button and leave a comment. It massively helps the algorithm which just helps the videos circulate around the internet uh, and therefore we grow. Great. <laughs> Hope you're having an amazing week. I will see you guys in the next video and happy hunting.